uh, Jesus as a champion of women. Um, Jesus is and was the ultimate supporter and promoter of women. To fully, to fully understand how significant his affirmations of women were, were then and as today, we must comprehend the character of the first century Judea. Then, a woman and no status, Noah was a testimony admissible in courts of law. Men could divorce their wives by simply saying three times, I divorce you, I divorce you, I divorce you. Men were not expected to address women in public. That is in the first century Judea. Women were treated as possessions. And in first century, in Judea, you end to be a man to inherit the family wealth. But now in contrast, um, Jesus was the ultimate feminist. No one bestowed honor and value and worth to women more than our savior, Jesus Christ. And we are going to see that from three um, Bible verses, but I will paraphrase uh, so we will not refer to the Bible directly. Let us consider the first occasion. That is in John chapter 4, verses 1 to 42. Jesus meets, talks, talks, and asks for a drink of water from the Samaritan woman at the well. Jesus was alone at the well after his disciples had gone into the city looking for food. And he asked the Samaritan woman who came to the well for a drink. Then the woman of Samaria sent to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask and drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus was asking her to do something. Uh, Jesus was asking her to give her water, and she believed she was not qualified to give it to him because she was a Samaritan. And again, she was a woman and a sinner, an outcast. Because of the culture and a background and gender of being a woman, this woman was shocked that Jesus as a man and a Jew was asking for water and even speaking uh, to her. Even though she was reluctant to give her water, Jesus said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Something happens in the conversation and her eyes are opened. Jesus tells her about her life. The woman had gone through five uh, divorces. Jesus also revealed to her that he was the long-awaited Messiah. This was the first person ever that Jesus disclosed who he was, and this was a woman. The Samaritan woman, shared by society, would be the first person to know Jesus' well-kept secret. By doing this, Jesus broke the, the rules of male-female relationships at that time in Judea. Now let us look at the second example where Jesus comes out as a champion for women's rights and defending women. In the book of John, chapter 8, verses 8, Verses 1 to 11. In this chapter is the story of a woman caught in the act of adultery. The Jewish leaders seize upon it as an opportunity 
to trap Jesus upon the horns of a dilemma. You know, right away, they are not trying to uphold the Jewish law because they only bring the woman. If she was caught in the act, then they also earned the man. But the woman is more suitable for the trap they are trying to set for Jesus. Instead of being caught in their trap, Jesus turns the table on them and they walk away, humiliated and defeated. But the glory of the story is really about the forgiveness of God to this woman. Let us look at what is happening in the heart of these Jew Jewish leaders. One, the Jewish leaders see this as an opportunity for accusing him, that is Jesus. They are not concerned about keeping the law, otherwise they would have brought the man as well. Their trap is set so that if Jesus says that the woman should not be stoned, he would be defying the law of Moses. If Jesus says that the woman is to be stoned, he would be defying the Roman law. Jesus answered, let him who is without sin be the first to cast a stone. He confronts their hypocrisy and the hardness of their own hearts, and they live embarrassed and humiliated. But this woman is in fact caught in the act of adultery, and there is actually much to learn from her story. Especially when you see the grace of God when Jesus refuses to condemn her. Jesus defends and cancels the woman caught in adultery. He protects her, values her, and gently instructs her to go and sin no more. In summary, I will read Galatians chapter 3, verses 28, where it says, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor there is male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Jesus was elevating women to men's level, full equality, and when Jesus talked to all people about becoming sons of God, we also see Paul continuing with the same teachings, where he says that we are all heirs of God's bounty, and righteousness. They are speaking to all people, women included, that they are all sons of God. We are all sons of God, regardless of our gender. To Jews listening to this in the first century in Jerusalem, Jesus was preaching a radical orthodoxy that made women equal to men. The announcement that all women are equal to men and heirs to the kingdom of God speaks powerfully to the inclusiveness of the wonderful God we serve. Amen. Let us stand up. What a friend we have in Jesus. What a privilege to carry everything to come in prayer. Oh, what this we often forfeit. Oh, what interest can we bear? Oh, because we do not care. Let's pray. We thank you, God, again. We appreciate your love and mercies. And thank you, Jesus, for walking the steps of gender justice. Thank you, Jesus, for setting a good example that we are all equal. God, as we continue with this day, we seek your understanding so that, Father, we may be able to get the knowledge to take back to our organizations and our communities. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Have a good day.